everybody. It is Sunday, May 6th, and I am here for a solo trip around the main slate. I can immediately see that I'm missing uh, the cleanup hitter for the Yankees. Surprise, surprise. Amazing, uh, amazing quality to start this guy off. But no, we're just gonna we're gonna take a casual look through um, through the main slate. I don't know how I missed Stanton. It's kind of crazy. Absolutely did though. Boom, there he is. So, uh, slates look a little bit different. There's a Rangers-Red Sox game at 3 o'clock that uh, is not in the FanDuel main slate, but is in the DK slate. So, I will touch on that. Um, I've got all my stuff here. It doesn't look like there's going to be any weather issues. So, no major reasons to worry there. I'm going to treat every game like it's the same. Just going to dive in uh, abbreviated thoughts on each game, and then we'll take a look at my crunches. Um, first game up, Yankees and Indians. Yankees 4.9 run implied total, Indians 4.3. 57% chance to win for the Yankees. Uh, Domingo German going for a German? 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 Why did I say it like that? Let's look that up. It's a Sunday show, people. It's I can do whatever I want. German? German, Herman, Domingo Herman. There we go. Got it. Thanks, baseball reference. Uh, Domingo Herman, because I know how to say things. Uh, going for the Yanks. Mike Clevenger going for the Indians. Um, don't have a terribly large amount of uh, Mike Clevenger. Let's see if I had him at all on DK. Yeah, no Clevenger. Small amount of German, Herman. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that up the entire time. Herman, uh, let's see what I've got him on on FanDuel. Uh, I got 6% of him when I ran him, so a very marginal amount of either pitcher. Herman, you know, 5,800, second cheapest pitcher on FanDuel, so I'm cool with that if you need to pay up for a couple stacks, but not a guy that I'm gonna be having a ton of. Uh, he works as a second starter on DK, but I think there's just better options out there. There's some cheap stacks that allow you to use guys like Scherzer, Syndergaard, Archer. Um, you can use all those guys together and, and still get to some reasonable stacks. So not really on the pitching here. Uh, what you'll see for people that pay really close attention to what I have on this sheet, and I need to redo it so that we can get better and cleaner information on here. Uh, the percentage I have here is the total ownership uh, for all of the guys in the lineup on FanDuel right now because that's where I'm looking at. Um, I'll add DK uh, when Jake and I talk tomorrow. So 20 and 4, uh, I'm not really looking at much from a Yankees perspective. Uh, 4.9 run implied total. I thought they would have been a little bit more popular. I do like Stanton a bit as a one-off on either site, particularly on DK. Uh, I think he looks pretty nice. I think Gardner looks pretty nice uh, regardless of site. But for FanDuel, it's really hard to get to any cost-efficient Yankee stacks. Uh, they just don't have the best prices right now. Um, I'll have, like I said, like you can tell by that 20%, I'll have a very little bit of the Yanks. Uh, nothing crazy. And similar for the Indians, I basically won't have them at all. Uh, they're just not... You know, one or two lines at best. They're just not a line that I'm looking at. Uh, not really set up for any sort of one-off scenarios either. Just, uh, you know, it's not going to be for me. There are there are more likely options uh, throughout the rest of these games. Mets and Rockies. Uh, Mets 3.9 run implied total. Rockies 2.8, which is mind-bogglingly low. 64% chance to win for the Mets. Uh, Noah, Noah Syndergaard going for New York. Kyle Freeland going for Colorado. You're not using Freeland at all. Uh, Syndergaard, one of the best options on the day. Uh, you could flip a coin between him and Scherzer. I don't really have too much preference one way or the other. They're both coming up in large, large quantities. Um, you know, they're, they're hitting my exposure limits on both sites. So I'll have like 50-50 Syndergaard and Scherzer. 
Um, basically, one of my like each lineup that I would have is going to have at least one of them if I were playing on DK and on FanDuel. Um, you know, they'll make up probably seventy to eighty percent of my exposure. A scattering of the rest of the guys. Just too hard to be confident about anybody else. Those implied totals are just too low. Uh, 2.8 for the Rockies, 3.0 for the Phils. Um, I want no part of the Rockies at all. You know, if you want to have one stack out of 150 lines as a, a Syndergaard fade with like Blackman, Para, and Gonzalez, you know, I guess that makes sense from a contrarian perspective if you're expecting a lot of ownership here. But the only thing that I would be looking at uh, with any sort of uh, priority would be Syndergaard and then there are some Mets stacks um, they look a little bit better on DK than they do on FanDuel from a price perspective um, I don't have anybody in crazy amounts outside of Wilmer Flores who is just dramatically underpriced and really mashes lefties so I have a lot of Flores even in like one-off scenarios he makes a lot of other stacks work on FanDuel uh, only 2300 you can't really pass that up especially for a guy hitting second in the lineup um implied total just isn't high enough for the Mets to really go wild so I'll have some lines you know probably five to six percent Mets uh and that's about it and then Rockies total avoidance if you're asking me to pick between Syndergaard and Scherzer oh yeah um I'd probably go Syndergaard and save the money you know $1,800 cheaper on DK $1,500 cheaper on FanDuel um Syndergaard would probably be where I would go that's a big time price tag for Scherzer not like he doesn't deserve it though uh Rays and Blue Jays Rays 4.1 run implied total Blue Jays 3.6 it's a 56% chance to win for the Rays. Chris Archer going for Tampa. Marco Estrada going for Toronto. Uh, I like Archer quite a bit. Um, he's probably my third guy. I guess not probably. He's definitely my third guy, uh, especially on DraftKings. 8,400. Um, I'll have a lot of Archer. I'll probably like I'll probably have a lot of Scherzer Archer or Syndergaard Archer. I think you can get there and still have whatever stacks you're really looking for. Um, from a Marco Estrada perspective, he's just like a one-off guy for me. Although on DK he looks a bit better, only 5600. Um, I don't have a huge problem using Marco Estrada on DraftKings because of that value. Uh, opens up some things if you're using guys like Scherzer. No interest really in the Blue Jays bats outside of just a, uh, a contrarian stack against Archer. 3.6 run implied total. Nothing to get super excited about. From the Rays, uh, not not another, like, I just don't have a lot of Rays either. 4.1 run implied total. You know, middle of the pack today. No real great pricing options. You can say, I don't know, like Spawn and CJ Crone look okay from a one-off perspective on FanDuel. Duffy and Brad Miller sort of have that pricing benefit on DraftKings. Uh, they're not a team that I'm going to have more than maybe one or two stacks of. So, again, not a, not a terribly interesting game outside of the pitching. Um, it's just Archer for me. And he's clearly behind Scherzer and Syndergaard on FanDuel. Um, yeah, he's pretty clearly behind the two of those guys on FanDuel. But he's my he's my number three. Braves and Giants. I like this one. Uh, Braves four point nine one yeah four point nine run implied total. Giants four point three. Uh, it's a fifty six percent chance to win for the Braves. Mike Soroka going for Atlanta. Andrew Suarez going for the Giants. Um, Soroka's fine. You know he's a nice prospect. He doesn't have the same sort of swing and miss stuff as you would like. He's getting a little bit of uh, helium, so to speak. Uh, he's rising a bit more than he probably should. He's just good. He's, he's a fully functional, like, high, like max number two starter, in my opinion. Um, I like him. He's not really applicable from a fantasy perspective today. Uh, same for Andrew Suarez. Uh, these are two guys that I don't really have much interest in. Uh, I'm much more likely to have the bats, and you can go sort of either way on this one. Um, 
pretty even in terms of stacks. I think guys like Blanco and like Blanco, McCutcheon, and Posey all look really nice at the top of the uh, Giants line. Um, you can fill that out with Belt, Brandon Crawford, Evan Longoria. That's about as far down as I would really want to go. And then for the Braves, uh, Albies and Acuna are like very nice options at the top. I don't get a lot of Freeman or Marcakis. It's the lefty lefty matchup. Marcakis just four thousand on Fanduel, forty three hundred on DK. Way too expensive. Um, if I'm doing a, like the the primary stacks are going to be Albies, Acuna, Bautista, and Flowers. Um, and then you know you could rotate Freeman and Marcakis in accordingly. They probably won't be owned all that much because of the lefty lefty matchup. But I have solid amounts of Braves and Giants stacks. Let me see how they look. Yeah, Giants very popular as a stack on DraftKings, uh, more so than they are on FanDuel. Posey, McCutcheon, uh, Gregor Blanco, and Longoria popping up the most. Uh, Giants, oddly enough, looking like the second most popular stack on DK. It must be the right combination of uh, positions and price with regards to getting guys like Scherzer and Syndergaard. So keep an eye on the Giants. I don't expect them to be a, a highly talked about stack, but I think it's worth a look. Um, let me make one more note. Nats and Phillies. Nats, 4.2 run implied total. Phillies, 3.0. It's a 64% chance to win for the Nats. Max Scherzer going for Washington. Jake Arrieta going for Philly. This one's kind of crazy to me. Um, and obviously very low implied total for both teams, particularly the Phillies. Three is just, whew, it's rough. Love Scherzer. I've already talked about that. Uh, he's a guy that I'm going to have a lot of. Um... I normally end up with a lot of Jake Arrieta. I was really surprised. He's grading out as like my least popular option um, on either site. And I, that surprised me a lot. But that's what happens when you have that little of a chance to pick up a win uh, from a Vegas perspective. So Arietta, not a guy that I have a ton of. I can see sort of a contrarian play to Arietta, but... He grades out so poorly in my rankings that I just I don't think that I'm going to get there. I don't have any Philly stacks. I think it's a bad spot for them. Although uh, I do like Santana a little bit as a one-off here. Very marginal amount of Nats bats as well. Um, you know Harper always works as a one-off. Let's see what I have him at. Does he, how much does he show? Like I've got 10% Harper on the hundred lines I ran on DK. Um, Never a problem having some Harper. I think that Trey Turner looks uh, nice at 4,600 for a shortstop option on DK. Um, I won't have a ton, maybe 5% to 10% uh, Nat stacks. Anything in that top 1 to 5 is probably fine for me. Matt Adams has been hitting really well. 3,900 on FanDuel. $100 more, or more expensive than he is on DraftKings. Uh, it makes me not love him quite as much. Um... I'm I'm just here for the pitching. It's it's Scherzer for me, and and that's about it. Steamer projected 12 Ks per nine with a sub three FIP is just absolutely terrifying. He's so good. Uh, he'll be popular, obviously. Um, so you know, balance that accordingly. If you want to do a, a contrarian stack or two, if you're playing multiple lines, I think that looks a little bit better on DK than it does on FanDuel. But this isn't a spot to get cute in a single line. You don't want to. You don't want the Phillies, and I don't think you really want the Nats either. Uh, Brewers and Pirates. This one's a little bit more interesting. Um, Brewers 4.7 run implied total. Uh, Pirates 4.2. Chase Anderson. Going for the Brewers, 56% chance to win. Chad Cool going for the Pirates. Am I saying that correctly? Is it cool? Is it cool? I'm really bad at pronouncing names. I think it's just from where I'm from. It's cool. cool. <laughs> That's outstanding. Why the double H's? Uh, so Chad Cool's Twitter handle is Cool Whip. And I said it like Stewie, obviously. But. Cool Whip 11. That's a fucking fun Twitter handle. 
Good for you, Chad Cool. I think I'm gonna like you now. I went to UD. It's nice. Where are you from? Born. Some random place in Delaware. Whatever. Not interesting. Anyway. Uh, not really looking at much of Chase Anderson or Mr. Cool. Anderson has a little bit of value on DraftKings. Uh, let's see. He came up in 2% of the 100 lines that I ran. So nothing too crazy. But, you know, he's fine. Not anybody that I want to go crazy about. But if you're playing a bunch of lines, he's fine as a second starter. Much more likely to be on the bats here. And that's either side of the bats. Uh, I write about the Brewers a lot. Um, they're just a better offense. You know, they have 4.7 run implied total. They're usually in the top few teams of implied total. So Kane, Yelich, Braun, if he plays, Travis Shaw. Uh, I like Jonathan VR probably more than most people. Um, I'll have a decent amount of Brewer stacks. They're one of my more popular ones. Let's see. Where, where do they rank? One, they're my third most popular stack right now. That could change, but somewhere in that area. And then uh, same for the Pirates. Pirates are actually my second most popular stack. That's more of a price thing than anything else. Adam Frazier comes up a lot for me. Um, you know, gets the lefty-righty matchup, top of the order, $2,400 price point. Uh, I like Polanco. I like Josh Bell. I don't normally like Starling Marte. I guess his price is probably tumbling if I had to guess. Let's take a look at that. All righty, outfield. Sort by projections. Marte is 3,400. Oh, his price is up over his last game. Yeah, okay, that makes way more sense. So, Marte, as of like 10 days ago, was up over 4,000. Now, um, he was 3,200 yesterday, up to 3,400 today. So... He's finally at a place where he's grading out well. And that's making the Pirates a little bit more applicable as a stack. Um, I'm, I'd, I'd be using the top four guys for sure. I think Cervelli is fine on DraftKings if you need a catcher. Uh, Corey Dickerson, not a guy that I'm usually crazy about. He showed up in 3% of the lines. It's mostly just a ton of Polanco and, and Starling Marte. Um, I'm going to have both of these teams a decent amount. I don't have to worry too much about having the pitching, so I'm just cheering for a big game. Um, if I had to pick one guy out of this entire game that I would have the most of, it's probably Christian Yelich. Make sure I'm not lying here when I say that. Oh, yeah, uh, Kane as well. Um... You know, that leading off, 3400 He's actually significantly cheaper than Yelich, $600. So I'll take that righty-righty matchup. That's fine. But, yeah, uh, I like both stacks. Don't use the pitchers. White Sox and Twins. Uh, White Sox, 4.3 run implied total. Twins, 4.9. 57% chance to win for the Twins. James Shields going for Chicago. Kyle Gibson going for Minnesota. If this were during the week, this would be the time where uh, Jake talks about how bad James Shields is and how bad his exit velocity is and how he's going to get clobbered. Just assume that that's all happening right now in the background. Um, I agree with it completely. You don't want any part of James Shields. He's not very good. Um, I don't really want any part of Kyle Gibson either. Not a guy that I'm terribly excited to have in a fantasy perspective. Uh, White Sox bats are very, very marginal. Uh, I think Jose Abreu works as a one-off um, from a first base perspective, but I wouldn't have more than like one or two lines. Uh, they're just not... Like, I just don't really want them. I don't know. I don't love the prices. They look a little bit better on DK. Who's the... Most owned White Sox that I have. Boop, 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 boop. Do I have any? Yeah, so like Delmonico is getting 2% on DraftKings. That's about the extent of it. You know, two or three lines of White Sox is all you're going to get. Uh, how much Delmonico do I have on FanDuel right now? 
Yeah, two percent. So like, if you want to have three to four lines of White Sox, if you're max entering, I think that's a reasonable spot to be. You don't want much more. Twins are my most popular stack. I feel like I've been talking about the Twins every day for the past month, but. 4.9 run implied total in a matchup against James Shields when you have uh, an ass load of lefty bats in your lineup. That shit's going to happen. Um, love them. Love basically everybody on the team. You know, Dozier's price right now is crazy on FanDuel. His ownership projections are always through the roof. 3700 for a second baseman. Hitting second uh, against a guy like James Shields. So I'll have a ton of Dozier. A ton of Mauer, Kepler, Robbie Grossman. Uh, you know, I'm not a big Mitch Garver guy on FanDuel, but I assume that I get a decent amount of him on DraftKings. Let me check. Yeah, 12% Mitch Garver. So, you know, if you're getting to Mitch Garver at 7 with the Twins, you know that the Twins are the, the stack of the day. Um, any real combination through the top 8 is fine with me. You can use any part of it, honestly, on DK. You know, if you can get, like, Eduardo Escobar for 4000 on DraftKings, I like it. If you need to pay down at shortstop and get Adrizana at twenty six hundred on DraftKings, like I don't love it. Uh, it's not my favorite. I don't love playing guys in the nine hole, but he's worth a little bit of a look. Um, it's just it's all twins for me. They'll be my most popular stack. They'll be in the spotlight stacks article that I have not written yet, but will be up um, probably by the time you're reading this. It's just all twins. Uh, I don't end up with a lot of Eduardo Escobar on uh, Fanduel. His price at four thousand for the shortstop is is tough to get to. He's still my most popular shortstop. Uh, I have him in nineteen percent of my lines, but um, he'll be like the spot where I probably don't have him all that much because he's not incredibly cost efficient. Uh, I do like him though, so I like as a player, not like as a DFS option. He'll come in where he comes in, but it's Mauer, Dozier, Kepler. Grossman and Garver, uh, if you're if you're on DK Garver, that is. Uh, but Mauer, Dozier, Kepler, Grossman are the four guys that I want, like without question. And then uh, Eddie Rosario uh, doesn't pop up as much as I would want him to, but it's a really nice matchup. Lefty righty on Shields, you know, has some pop in the bat. Uh, he's a guy that probably should be in more lineups than I have him. What do I have him in? Where are you hiding, Eddie? Yeah, like I've only got Eddie Rosario in eight lineups. It's just because outfield is so deep. Uh, it's really tough to to get to him if the price is wrong. Like if Eddie Rosario was like 3,600, um, he'd look a little bit better. But grab every twin you want. You're not going to be upset about it. Well, I mean, you might be upset about it. Variance in baseball is crazy as hell. But they're the best play. They should be the chalkiest stack. Uh, and if they're not... Uh, even better. Uh, that would make me even happier because they'll be my choppiest stack. Royals and Tigers. Uh, Royals, 4.8 run implied total. Tigers, 4.1. It's a 57% chance to win for the Royals. Jake Junis going for Kansas City. Matt Boyd going for Detroit. Um, not really looking at either of these pitchers. I don't see... Junis or Boyd popping up for me at all on FanDuel and on DraftKings. 6% Junis, which I think is pretty reasonable. $7,300 price point is not bad. He's $1,200 more expensive on FanDuel, which is fucking ludicrous. Um, can't play, you can't play Junis on FanDuel with more than a line or two. And then Boyd is just sort of off the table for me. Uh, I've got a very little amount of Royal stacks. Uh, who's the biggest stack? So Solaire getting a lot of love. Wow, that's a particularly on DK. 24% Solaire, 23% Merrifield, 20% Cuthbert, 16 Salvador Perez. Yeah, that top six, well, top five, I don't really love John Jay against the lefty. But Merrifield, Solaire, Moose Tacos, Salvador Perez, and Cuthbert, uh, a really popular DK stack. Something you want to keep in mind. I don't love them as much on FanDuel. Uh, let's see who's the most popular one. It's probably Solaire again. Yeah, Solaire in like 10%. So I'd probably have like 8 to 9% uh, Royals. I'd be happy with that. 
you know, 4.8 run implied total is pretty nice for today. Um, boy, not a guy I'm super worried about. Doesn't miss bats. 7Ks per nine projected from Steamer. Uh, 5.1 FIP. Just bad. So get those guys that can hit lefties. Merrifield, Soler, Salvador Perez, Cuthbert. Uh, if you need to bring Moose Tacos along for the ride, that's fine. Um, I don't really love the bottom part of the Royals lineup, but I do like that top five. That's about, you know, I'll take every I'll take the combinations I can get out of the top five and, and probably walk away. If you think you can, like, that's just, they could bring in a lefty late. Somebody's going to get, probably John Jay will probably get pinch hit for here. Um, there, or maybe Duda. If they really do go lefty, 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 you rest assured that in the sixth inning if this game's close, or the seventh inning if this game's close, uh, if they bring in a reliever, they're bringing in a reliever that's a lefty to face those clowns at the bottom. And then uh, I'd imagine the Royals will pinch hit for somebody. So be aware of that. If they're running that many lefties in a row, uh, try to pay attention to your exposure to multiple lefties in that scenario because somebody's probably going to get pinch hit for if the game stays close. Final game. This one's only for the DraftKings peeps. FanDuel, we don't have it. Uh, at least not in the traditional sense. Rangers, 3.5. Red Sox, 5.3. Uh, it's a 68% chance to win for the Red Sox. Doug Fister going for Texas. Chris Sale going for Boston. Uh, I don't like Sale all that much. Um... I'd much rather have Scherzer, Syndergaard, or Archer. Uh, Sale came up in, I want to say, 10% of the lines. Hmm, 9%. Close enough. I'll round up. Um, uh, Scherzer, Archer, and Syndergaard, just significantly more uh, popular here. Don't mind if you have him. I don't expect his ownership to be too crazy. But I just don't... like. He's just lost in that middle ground. Um, might be worth a play because of that if you think that his ownership is going to be relatively low. Uh, from a batting perspective, how high are the Red Sox popping up? I would have assumed a lot. Yeah, so there's bets in 17%. And then we get into like Nunez endeavors around 12. So bets looks like a really nice one off play. Although $5,900 is uh, pretty pricey on DraftKings, but, you know, that's what happens when you're grabbing one of the, what, five best players in baseball? Ten, top ten? Somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so, you can get to a Red Sox stack. It's just pretty pricey. Um, it's not David pricey, though. But um, um, Let's see. Let me let me sort this down by bets. Well, I'll, I'll do that when we look at the uh, stacks. Bets, Hanley, JD... Uh, Mitch Moreland and Devers both get the lefty righty matchup, so I think that'd be fine. I don't. You can really make a case for just about anything here. Christian Vasquez, twenty four hundred. If you need a catcher, how much did I get of him? Yeah, eight percent. So you can really make your way through any part of the Red Sox lineup and be and be fine with it. Fister, not a guy that misses bats, so that's going to be a little scary for the Red Sox. They should absolutely rake here. Um, I'd expect them to be relatively popular on DK. Probably more popular than what I have them coming out as. So, um, On paper, I feel like I should have them more. I'm not sure why I don't. I'd have to dig into it. Just kind of tough to get to when you have like Bogarts at 5,000, JD at 52, Betts at 59. You need to make some concessions. That might have to be a, an Archer, Marco, Estrada, Red Sox stack. So let's see what that looks like. This is um, DraftKings Crunch from before I started the video. Let's take a look. How would we get to a Red Sox stack? I'll start with bets and we'll see what shows up. So you can do Looks like Scherzer and Estrada. Oh, okay, so you don't even have to go to Archer. You can do Scherzer Estrada with a Red Sox Giant stack. You could do Scherzer Estrada with a Red Sox Pirate stack. Um, Cindergard Estrada. 
Man, that one would be interesting. That's a little bit further down than I would like to go. Let me look at the two lines with Archer. Man, Archer, Syndergaard, and a Red Sox Royal stack is pretty nice. I could roll with that. If I needed to play one lineup, though, do I have any Scherzer Syndergaards? I've got four of them. What do they look like? So it's Syndergaard Scherzer with Giants Rangers. Not happening. Syndergaard Scherzer, Giants Royals. More likely to happen? I don't know. Uh, what else we got? Mets, Royals, Twins, Rangers. Yeah, it looks like Scherzer Syndergaard is going to be tough to pull off. I think Archer plus X is the is the way to go. Archer Sale will probably be a really low owned combination. And it probably yeah, that opens up a lot of nice stuff. Twins Twins Braves, Giants Twins. You can, that looks pretty tasty. One, two, four, five of the twins. One, two, three, six for the Giants with Archer and Sale. If Sale's going to be under-owned, I think that's an interesting way to go. I'm excited. I, I don't know. I just Something about it I like a lot. If I bring over FanDuel now. Uh, what do we got? So, Syndergaard and Scherzer are my top pitchers. Archer filing in behind that. Um, I would assume... You know, these two guys are going to be the top guys. So let's take a look at Archer and see what sort of uh, stacks we can get to. Archer with the Twins and Braves or Archer with the Twins and Brewers. Um, I like a lot of these lines, man. If the Braves and Twins pop off, I'd be super happy there. Pricing and a pitching is perfect today, and uh, there's enough really high-end hitting stacks that you can build a lineup that you're going to be really happy with. I'm pumped. Um, that's all I've got. That was a quick rip through it. I'll be back tonight uh, with the Night Shift podcast, um, taking a look at tomorrow's slate. I'll have spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks out within the next, you know, probably by the time you're listening to this. Um... Those two basketball games yesterday were absolutely bonkers. I'll have projections up there for uh, the two games today. But, man, the end of that Sixers-Celtics game was wild. The end of that Cavs game was wild. LeBron the GOAT. Uh, I don't have anything about hockey. That's Jake's foray. I don't even know if they play tonight. I'm sure they do. Uh, evidently, there was a horse race. I didn't see a single second of it. Did that happen, or is that today? Like, that's how little I follow anything else. Is that today or tomorrow? I guess it was yesterday. I don't know. Who gives a shit? It's horse racing. Whatever. Uh, only thing that matters right now to me, baseball. Awesomeo.com. Uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Check out all the articles. And follow us on Twitter at Awesomeo underscore com. A-W-E-S-E-M-O. It's up there. Up there, if you look. Uh, go there. Subscribe. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you pay attention to the top of basically any tournament on any given day, you'll likely see the name Osimo there. And that's because he's the number one player in the world and he wins a lot. If you need some help, his rankings are on the site every single day. And they are exactly what he's using. So... Trust me, it will help you. I absolutely promise that. Anyway, that's all I've got. Enjoy your Sunday, people. Uh, if it's nice, go out and do stuff. If it's not nice, stay in, watch baseball, watch basketball. And, um, I don't know, uh, Jake and I will see you in the morning. Later, people.